Hi, I'm Sarah Bell. I'm a lecturer at the University of Exeter, but I'm based down in Truro at the European Centre for Environment and Human Health. For the last 10 years or so, my research has been exploring experiences of health, well-being and disability with varied forms of nature from, you know, uh, when we step out the door and experience the weather to parks, gardens, woodlands, coast, countryside, all those sorts of things. And it's been particularly around trying to understand how to promote more socially inclusive opportunities to experience positive uh, benefits through, through Nature Encounter. Now, today, I'm very excited to be here because I get to share a little bit about a project that I've been working on over the last year with Joe Grace, um, with the Fantastic Include Choir, with music therapist Liz Eddy, and with Access Lizard Adventure, which is a fab organisation down here in Cornwall, who uh, facilitate accessible kayaking experiences. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been developing a kayaking sensory story. So I'm holding up the booklet here on the screen. And in today's uh, talk, I'm just going to share a little bit about the story. I'm going to give you a little tour of it, give a bit of background to the rationale behind it, um, and hopefully encourage you all to think about using it or developing all sorts of other genres of, of aquatic sensory story. So let's think about the background to all of this first. So there's increasing awareness that time spent with so-called blue space can promote opportunities for health and well-being. So what do we mean by blue space? Is it a big blue sky, the rain falling from a slightly grayer sky, or all the lakes, streams, rivers and oceans that are sometimes blue, sometimes more of a murky brown? It can be all of these things, but a lot of the research that's been done into the potential health and well-being benefits of time spent with blue space has so far focused more on those lakes, rivers and oceans. But we also know that blue space comes with risks, riptides, slip hazards, flooding, and that not everyone can access beneficial blue space experiences equally. We know there are physical barriers to access, the cost of getting there, inaccessible paths, inappropriate signage, for example. There may be sensory barriers, the sensory experience of being in or near a blue space, the sounds, the textures, the scents, the movement can be quite overwhelming, particularly if unfamiliar or if visiting on one of those stripy weather days where the sun is quickly nudged out by strong winds and heavy rain, only to peek back out again, changing the entire sensory mood and atmosphere of a setting in quick succession. We also know that there are social barriers to access, feeling unwelcome, out of place, unconsidered. And to some extent, this relates to the stories of blue space, who they feature, how they're told, what they suggest about the correct or so-called normal ways to engage with a particular setting. And that made me wonder about the scope to share new stories that could foster wider feelings of belonging and connection. As noted by prominent writer, researcher, Arthur Frank, people not only think about stories, far more consequentially, people think with stories. And this got me thinking about the potential of sensory stories. And so Joe and I started working together and with Access as an Adventure to develop a kayaking sensory story. A sensory story that could bring a blue space experience home for more people. Although we embarked on this before the pandemic, this has felt particularly valuable during these times of COVID-19, when many people haven't been able to venture far beyond the home. So I'm going to introduce the story now and share a little bit more about the rationale behind it. As you go on, you'll also hear from Joe, from the Fantastic Include Choir, and from Kyria, one of our super sensory story participants. So... The story itself was produced as part of the Restoring Landscape for Social Inclusion collaboration, which was a project funded by the UK Economic and Social Research Council Impact Acceleration Account from 2020 to 2022. That essentially means that it's a fund which is not funding research per se, but it's about trying to get some of the findings from a research project into practice. The aim of the project has been to inform interpretation, access and management decisions that respect the diverse ways in which landscapes are sensed, valued and experienced by individuals and groups over time. 
Now, this particular project strand aimed to develop and use sensory stories to help support safe and rewarding water-based experiences amongst people with profound and multiple disabilities. As I'm sure most of you here will know, in sensory stories, each sentence is partnered with a rich sensory experience. And so we thought that sensory stories might be a useful tool for creating access to nature-based experiences, including those in so-called blue space. They can provide a chance to rehearse experiences and explore sensations that might otherwise um, people might otherwise find challenging before they visit, and also whilst they're at home in a safe and familiar space. Experiencing the sensory story in this way can help to orientate a person, enabling them to tune into their sensory systems and map out what will happen when they visit. And knowing what to expect can help to alleviate anxieties and support someone to get more out of a nature experience when they do visit. So our kayaking sensory story can be experienced at home to gain a sense of what it might feel like to kayak. It can also provide a stepping stone to kayaking, building points of sensory familiarity before visiting a kayaking site or before meeting a kayak for the first time. And as I said, we hope it will encourage people to think about sensory landscape access in new ways and perhaps initiate a whole new library of aquatic sensory stories for people to enjoy. So the sensory story booklet, it takes you through the sequence of getting ready to go kayaking, cross into the water and board in the kayak. The adventure that someone has after that is up to them, but this story aims to provide a route to it. Now, some people kayak at sea and some people kayak on lakes and locks or in quarries. So we have two versions of this story. We have one for seawater and one for calm water. And on the screen now is a screenshot of the booklet contents page. So there's a little bit which uh, gives the rationale to the project, which I've just sort of uh, introduced. Um, then we introduce the story itself. We provide instructions and guidance, well, more guidance uh, for actually sharing the sensory access story, because the way you share it will be different for, for different people. Um, and so this is a screenshot of the story itself. Now you'll notice something on there which says there is a chorus. <laughs> so our sensory story has a special additional twist in that the words of the story also form the verses of the lyrics of a sea shanty. So people have the option of singing the story as a sea shanty. It's perhaps a bit much to try and sing and story at the same time because it doesn't allow too much time to explore all the sensations. But it might be nice to sing or play the shanty before or after the story to signal the beginning and end of it. Now the Fantastic Include Choir recorded both the Calm and Seawater versions for us. Uh, so I'm just going to play the Seawater version for you here. Happily, he will be
And a huge thank you to the Include Choir for recording that, especially as they were doing it remotely uh, with the pandemic situation. Um, and also a massive thank you to Liz Eddy, who wrote the music. Um, yeah, there's also the Calm Water version. So do have a look at those um, or listen. Now, it might take some time to work out the best way of sharing the story and the shanty. And some of our lovely story recipients have shared this process with us by sending videos at different stages and showing how the enjoyment of the story has really developed through this process. So now I'd like to share a clip of the lovely Kyria who uh, shared the story after a few attempts of refining the pace and the offering of the sensations. Um, so I'm just, I'll just show you the, the last of the four videos that uh, they sent. Um, but I think it also gives an idea of, of how the story can be shared. And we're going to practice kayaking again. Kayaking. Can you hear? Wetsuit gives you a squeeze. Neoprene smells like rubber and salt. Buoyancy aids to keep you safe. Now you hear zip up. Zip. Have to leave. We will be paddling on the sea. Feel the swell and feel the spray paddling on the sea. <laughs> now it's time to cross the beach. Feel the sand on your feet. Can you feel that? Nice. 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 Hold the toggle. Pull the kayak now, drag the kayak. <laughs> now the sea gets loud as you get close. <laughs> Happily, we will be paddling on the sea. Feel the swell and feel the spray paddling on the sea. At the shoreline, time to get in. Feel cold water, wet your skin. <laughs> Can you feel the water gig on your feet? <laughs> now, sit up straight. You're already very straight. Correct position. Hold the paddle. Dig and pull. Dig and pull. Happily, we will be paddling on the sea. Feel the swell and feel the spray. Paddling on the sea. <laughs> oh, it's all wet on the sea peak. Okay, kayaking is over. So a huge thank you to Kiria for sharing that with us. Um, I think it just gives a, a, a really lovely idea of, of how it can be experienced. Um, and actually, as part of the project, we have been really keen to gain feedback from everyone involved in using and sharing and being part of the story. Um, so I'm about to share a clip now where Joe is just explaining how we're trying to ensure that the responses of our story recipients are directly included in this process. So over to Jo. So I'm just going to share part of this clip. I do recommend watching the earlier bit as well because Jo takes you through again a bit of the background to the project but also uh, the different sensations that you can share as part of the story and some tips about how to share it. But I'm just going to play this last bit because it relates to this process of trying to gain feedback from, from um, lots of different perspectives. That's our creating access part. This next bit is kind of me. Um, 
this is something I really, really hope for from this project, especially with regards to people with profound and multiple learning disabilities, because there is this phenomenon that occurs within the research that's done about these people and the projects that run around these people, which is that they never get asked what they thought. <laughs> Nobody ever asked them, did you enjoy that? Um, you know, how was it for you? Did, were you worried about that? They don't get asked. They, they have no voice in these sorts of things. Somebody gets asked, it's the person standing next to them, their, um, their family member, their carer, you, you know, lovely people, and I'm sure their reporting is accurate, but they don't get asked directly. And I really want to be able to ask them directly. So what we are asking you to do is to fill in a little uh, profile that explains how they communicate because we know that people with profound and multiple learning disabilities are exceptional communicators and they create their own set of meaning, their own language, their own expression and it's different for everybody. So what we're asking you to do is to fill in that little profile and get a few people to fill it in so that we can get lots of different perspectives because obviously you will have a really good idea but we don't know, none of us know that our idea is wholly accurate so we want a sort of a cross-reference of how does this person express themselves and then please will you send us a couple of little video clips of you sharing the story. Maybe one of you sharing the story when you first get it and one of you sharing the story when you've been doing it for a little while so that we can watch those and listen directly to the person who experienced the story. And we'll use the information that you gave us on those little survey sheets to do that so that we can hear their voice or their expression. And I'm so keen that we do that because I see bigger studies, you know, we're just a little project, we're, we're not a, a research study, we're just a little project, um, but I see bigger studies where they say, oh, well, we couldn't ask the people, so we did this. And I want to be able to say, yes, you can, you could, you could, if you just, you know, with a bit of oomph, it's possible to listen directly to people with profound multiple learning disabilities. So thank you so much for being a part of this. I will pop in the information below a link to a guide to sharing sensory stories if you want a bit more information about that. But it really is very simple. You know, do what's right for you. Get your kit sorted. Say the sentence. Share the experience. Our sensory story can also be sung. So if you want to sing the sentence. So I'll, I'll stop there. Um, but if you would like to find out any more about that process of giving feedback, do get in touch with Joe or I and uh, we can share um, more information about that. There are a couple of websites on the screen now, which hopefully you can see. Um, the first one is part of my Sensory Nature page. This is just the news piece around the kayaking sensory story. So again, this background there, but also um, you can listen to the different versions of the shanty. You can download the booklet as well. And there is a link on that page to this page, which is where you can find the various recordings, um, some resources in terms of if you want to put in some, some nature sounds, some sea sounds, um, and that full video by Joe just explaining more about the, the story and the resources and the feedback approach. So, I will stop there, but I just really wanted to say a huge thank you for listening and a massive thank you to everyone involved and everyone who is happily uh, or unhappily uh, experiencing the story. And, um, and hopefully this will inspire future work in this area.